With that said, welcome to this week's Corruption Scorecard. And our story focus this week, Steinhoff. And as always, I'm joined by Michael Marilia, who's been doing the Psalms and digging uh, in terms of the checking the vaults, in terms of what has happened or has not happened by way of getting recourse and justice uh, in as far as Steinhoff is concerned. Michael, what can you tell us about this case? Absolutely, Tillis. This one has been really fascinating, really interesting to look at a case which is centered around the private sector and a big company, of course, like Steinhoff, one of the biggest on the JSC, in fact, at one stage. So let's bring up our scorecard, Tillis, and we'll chat. Uh, about it. First of all, you know, these guys became known as the magic money people, the, the money magicians. And I'll show you a money trick, a magic trick here to us. 50 rand. How do you turn 50 rand into just 80 cents? Well, you don't have to ask me. You can just ask the Steinhoff uh, CEO, Marcus Joester, because that's exactly what happened to the share price to us on the 5th of December 2017. There were concerns raised by the auditor at the time that was Deloitte. They refused to sign off on the financial statements for that year. We then got news that Marcus Joester was resigning, a shock move because he was revered uh, amongst investors on the JSC. And then the share price just plummeted, going from mm. around about 50 Rand at the time. Today, it's 78 cents. So that is the wow. magic trick that we've seen from the money magicians, going from wow. 50 rand to just 78 cents. I just wanted to put that in perspective. Sure. Us. That is jaw-dropping. That is a Steinhoff share. There we go, sitting on the wall as we speak. But let's focus on our numbers, Tullis. Of course, that is the man himself, Marcus Eurster. In terms of charges, we're giving this one six out of ten as you mentioned okay why why is that seems generous it seems generous i know but as you mentioned steinhoff did report its former ceo marcus Eurster, under the uh, prevention of corrupt activities act so we did see that action we also see saw that report by pwc uh, which was launched almost immediately after the scandal broke uh, that report was released effectively in march 2019 not all of it has gone public. Yeah, in fact, we've not, seen, we've not seen even half of it. In fact, we've got a summary, yeah. and Steinhoff is basically taking the approach that says, trust us, yeah. this is what the report says, we can't show you the rest of it. Exactly. So we'll talk about that a little bit uh, later as well. We know that the Hawks have uh, interviewed Marcus Eurster. The investigation is continuing. So we know that these cases are complicated, to us. You said perhaps it's a bit generous. We're going to give the officials a little bit of leeway uh, and a little bit of time, we're giving him 6 out of 10, and with charges to us, we have a 25% weighting, so that gives us a weighted score for this one of 1.5. Let's move on today in court to us. Of course, the key issue is Marcus Eurster has not really appeared in court uh, in any shape or form. We're giving this 5 out of 10. And I want to mention Deloitte as well, because Deloitte were the auditors at the time, Tullis. Mm. Critics have said, well, Deloitte, it's great that you raised the alarm in 2017, but you had been Steinhoff's auditors for almost 20 years. Yeah. Surely you should have... Signing off on those yeah. uh, annual financials um, year in, year out. Exactly, exactly. But we're going to give this a, a score of 5 out of 10, Tullis, because we understand that the... Uh, Legal enforcement authorities are now using PwC auditors and using some of their forensic evidence. They've brought right. them on board to try and fast track this process. So hopefully we'll see more action on the legal front utilizing what came out of that PwC report. So uh, in terms of the weighted score for day in court, remember we give at a 40% weighting to us two points uh, for the Steinhoff saga. But of course... This case is all about the money, right? Yep. Billions and billions and billions. Let's focus on civil legal redress. The key question, of course, will investors ever get their money back? So we're giving a score of 4 out of 10 here to us because, get this, Steinhoff has been talking about a settlement for investors of about $1 billion. But we understand that legal claims against Steinhoff are worth about 8 billion dollars so it's offering just a fraction of what investors and stakeholders mm. are actually asking it seems to us that Steinhoff is saying look take it because if we give you all the money you want 
we will have to be liquidated. Yeah, there'll be no Steinhoff left. There, there will be no Steinhoff sure. left. So they're basically saying, well, we'll give you some cash. We'll also give you some compensation in the form of shares. And we're hoping that the shares will appreciate in value. Uh, and then you'll get some of your money back. So, so basically, <laughs> it's saying, trust us again yeah. to run the company well. And it's shown that it doesn't necessarily... So no option of a clean break for someone who says, I've seen enough. I want nothing to do with you. I want you to pay me what you owe me. Yeah. And then I'm out of here. But basically, that goodwill offer to say the share value will appreciate. Uh, we are offering you shares um, as part of the compensation. Absolutely. And we've seen a lot of lawsuits against Steinhoff. We've seen... Uh, Dutch law firm uh, Barnes Krantz getting involved. We understand some South African uh, stakeholders have uh, joined that particular uh, mm. lawsuit. So this is going to get complicated, Tullis, and uh, Steinhoff is going to have to find a way. Christoph Visser as well has his own action oh, yes. on the go. Yeah. Yes, yeah, a major, uh, a major lawsuit with potentially billions. Uh, remember, we give a 25% weighting for civil legal redress to us. It doesn't seem like uh, we're going to get much bang for our buck when it comes to sure. legal redress. Uh, so four out of ten and a weighted score of one. Now let's move over to political uh, remedy. I guess for once the politicians weren't involved in this one, uh, but uh, <laughs> Cyril Ramaphosa and his cabinet uh, are going to have to make sure that they deal with corruption on all fronts to us. So in terms of political remedy, Martin Uster, uh, Marcus Uster was called before Parliament September 2018, and Scopa, of course, that uh, committee, uh, did grill him, but said, well, we got three different versions from three different people. Yeah. Marcus Joester is one of them. It's difficult to make sense of uh, this whole saga. But, Tullis, Parliament aside, there is an important role uh, by a group known as URBA. This is basically the industry body which regulates auditors. Yeah. Remember I spoke about Deloitte's role? Uber has come out to us and said uh, this is a wake-up call in terms of uh, the way that we regulate auditors and it has called for new laws which will allow the finance minister, for example, to determine a fine for auditors who are found to have uh, broken right. the rules. So something may come out of that Absolutely. Uh, so, that's long-lasting by way of remedy. Yes, indeed. So, yeah. uh, so, so Finance Minister Tito Mbaweni would be able to say uh, you guys got it wrong. You've damaged the reputation of the country's finance sector. You've damaged the economy. Uh, this is the fine that uh, you have to uh, pay. Currently, uh, Uber uh, can only impose a fine of about 200,000 rand, which is small change for people yeah. like Marcus Uerste. It's small change for the auditors themselves. So let's focus uh, very quickly on our final score. We're giving a 6 out of 10 in terms of political remedy. So charges, a weighted score to us of 1.5. Day in court, a weighted score of two. Civil legal redress, as we mentioned, one. And in terms of political remedy, 0 0.6. And I know you can't wait for this, Tullis. You might be surprised at this one, but a final score of just over five. So barely passing. And as I mentioned, we are accounting for the fact that these things do take time and that the authorities will need time to compile a winnable case. So we're we're, we're in a holding pattern, if you like, Tullis. Yeah. We're going to give some time, but not too much. And our average for the past five weeks, Tullis, pretty dismal, I'm afraid, guys, 4.17. Yeah. All right, Michael, we'll see you a bit later on. We are running our usual poll on yeah. ENCA.com, yeah. and it has to do with this particular issue as well. Let's bring up the uh, poll question to us. Here we go. Have your say. We posted this on ENCA.com on the website. The sign of fraud was revealed in December 2017. No one's been arrested while civil litigation is moving at a snail's pace. What is going on, South Africa? So these are your three options. The wheels of justice move slowly. The justice system is impotent against the rich. And finally, Tullis, they got away with it. So, All right. cost your vote in ENCA.com. All right, see you later. Michael Marilia will be tracking those uh, inputs from you from ENCA.com. All right, you're watching your corruption scorecard here on ENCA, and still to come, we give you the latest update on some big corruption cases as we focus on the unraveling of Steinhoff corruption in this hour. The Hawks and the NPA will join us shortly uh, for an update.